Today we will be looking at bankruptcy filing trends by chapter in the state of New Mexico. To do this we have about a dozen charts showing bankruptcy activity in the state going back to 1990. All this filing data comes from the Administrative Office of the United States Courts. Now, this first chart shows total filings by year in the state since 1990. And you can see that in the early uh, 1990s, filings were running around 4,000 per year. Um, by the late 1990s, this had jumped up to around seven or 8,000 per year and in, in, continued increasing to over 9,000 per year by the, uh, from uh, 2002 to 2004. There was a spike in filings in 2005, that was a year of bankruptcy reform, followed by about an 80% decline the next year. Uh, and then the filings increased through 2010, uh, but they never got back up to where they had been uh, from the period uh, 1997 to 2004, even though, you know, even in the uh, uh, worst part of the uh, most recent re recession. And since then have dropped down to uh, well under 4,000 cases and are now uh, you know, somewhat below where they were back even in 1990 and only about a third of where they were from 2002 to 2004. This uh, chart shows total filings relative population uh, you know, by state. The red colored states are the states that have the, the uh, highest rates and, and Tennessee is the perennial leader on that. Yellow are states that have very low bankruptcy rates, more than 25% below average, and the perennial uh, leader in this category would be uh, Alaska. New Mexico is kind of a borderline yellow state. Uh, they're, overall, they've been 22% below average over this uh, period of time. If we look at it year by year, uh, the red is the national average and the blue is uh, uh, New Mexico. Uh, in the years prior to bankruptcy reform, uh, the, the bankruptcy rate relative to population in New Mexico was about 15 percent below average. And since, say, 2006, they've been uh, in the 35 to 40 percent below average. So uh, over time, the uh, bankruptcy rate has, has fallen off more in, in uh, uh, New Mexico than, than national. Looking at Chapter 7 uh, filings uh, in the state, and this is uh, pretty much the same pattern as total filings. Uh, early 1990s, around 3,000 per year, but late 1990s, 6,000 per year, and then getting up to eight or 9,000 in the early 2000s. Big, big spike in 2005, 80% dropped the next year. Came back up to about 6,000, but uh, that's well below where it was from 2001 to 2004. And since then, it's dropped down to uh, just a little over 3,000. So uh, right now, filings are about where they were back in the early 1990s. The Chapter 7 filings are about there. Uh, but uh, only a little more than a third of where they were in the years prior to bankruptcy reform. Uh, this chart shows Chapter 11 filings in the state uh, since 1990. And you can see that there's a pretty big drop off throughout the 1990s, and this happened pretty much in, in every state. Uh, since then, uh, 30 to 50 has been you know, kind of the typical range uh, most years, a little bit higher uh, in the most two recent recessions. But, uh, and it looks like 2016 will be about more of the same, around 35 or 40 cases uh, filed in the state. Now, uh, Chapter 13 filing in the state have shown a very unusual pattern. In uh, the early 1990s, running around 600 per year, a big jump up, uh, particularly from uh, 1996 to 2008. And I'm really not sure why this happened, but it, it did happen in some, but not all the western states. Uh, it it definitely, you know, see a similar pattern in Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, and Oklahoma, but uh, not all the states out west. And this was followed by a, a pretty big drop off in 2000, early 2000s, running around 1,000 per year, then dropping down to about 800. And then since then, they've been very low. From 2016 or 2006 to 2015, they've only averaged about 400 per year. And uh, 
uh, you know, right now we're running 300 is more the typical pattern, and that's about what we'll see this year. And so uh, overall the uh, rate is uh, uh, below where it was in the early 1990s and only about a quarter of where it was in, in the, uh, the, the peak years. And I'm just not sure why we had three years where filings averaged around 2,000 per year, and all the other years since 1990 the average has been around 600. Uh, looking at the percent of cases filed as Chapter 13s, you can see that the national average has been right around 30 percent for uh, uh, several decades, with some disruption before and after uh, bankruptcy reform. In uh, uh, New Mexico, it started out around 10 percent in 1990, jumped up to the 30 percent, and got up to average in, in 1997, 1980, and then has dropped back down into uh, 10 percent or even below range now. Um, so uh, it's uh, this is uh, you know I'm not really sure why Chapter 13 practices kind of collapsed in the state of Mexico compared to uh, where it was in the heyday. Well, this chart shows the uh, unemployment rate by quarter in uh, New Mexico compared to uh, the national average. The blue is is in New Mexico, and you can see. Uh, uh, generally, uh, they were you know one or two percent below average from 2006 uh, all the way to 2013. But since then, uh, it, it seems that the unemployment rate in New Mexico is stuck on six or seven percent at a time, while the national has gotten quite a bit better. And uh, you know this is also you know fairly unusual pattern. Uh, Alaska shows the same thing where they didn't get that high in the recession and. And you know, it haven't gotten that low since it, uh, but in New Mexico is just showing uh, kind of persistent, uh, fairly high unemployment compared to other states. Now, filings uh, nationwide peaked back in September 2010 and have been falling for the last six years. The total decline in that time has been about 49 percent from the peak. Uh, New Mexico is right at that at about 50 percent. The smallest declines have been uh, throughout the southeast, uh, under 40 percent, uh, most of the states. Uh, these states tend to have very high Chapter 13 caseloads. The biggest declines, uh, over 60 percent, have been uh, in most of New England and uh, the southwest, and particularly uh, California and Nevada. Both are down 70 percent from the peak. But for uh, New Mexico, they're, they're right at the average, uh, you know, down by about half. And looking uh, at the uh, quarter by quarter, you see the uh, national average uh, over time, and it's getting a little bit smaller. And uh, New Mexico has followed this uh, pretty closely over time, and here also the declines seem to be getting a little bit smaller. Uh, so uh, overall, the filings are down about 6% nationwide uh, in the first six months of the year, about 7% down in, in uh, uh, New Mexico, although uh, the third quarter filings were only down about 3%. Um, you see a number of states are colored red on here, and that indicates a, uh, an actual increase. And if we'd looked at this uh, a year or two ago, there wouldn't have been any states colored red, but now there's about a dozen, and it, uh, we're expecting to see more and more of that. So within a year or two, virtually every state would be showing at least a modest increase. And also we see uh, very few states now that have, are having declines over 10 percent, these would be the colored white. There's uh, some on the West Coast and then uh, some sporadically across the country. But, uh, uh, you know, two years ago virtually every state would have been colored based on, colored white based on this uh, scheme. Uh, but now the uh, declines are slowing down virtually everywhere. Um, as far as the outlook, I think that there will be about 3,300 cases filed in the state in 2016. Uh, I see slight increases coming in, in, the, in the coming years, but I don't see any return to the 9,000 or so cases per year that uh, were filed in New Mexico, say from 2001 to 2004, without uh, some sort of major bankruptcy legislation or, uh, or another uh, you know, uh, strong recession. Well, that concludes our look at bankruptcy filings in New Mexico. For more statistical information and other information on bankruptcy, be sure to visit the newsroom section of the ABI website at www.abi.org.